All right, what's going on out there, everybody? Rooster in Tennessee looking at a uh, bass amplifier today. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not. Nitro 300 made by the Transail Corporation. Right there it says it. We've got a relative output meter here on the front. It says tune for maximum modulated. We've got four indicator lights down here in the front that work. On and off switch, standby switch. AM and sideband. Sideband delay does work. A high and low switch. You got a fuse here in the front. Load and tune knobs. And that's basically it. So I'm going to do a video on this amp. We're going to show the output. We'll take a look at the inside of it, kind of tell the story on it. Um, this one is for sale. Um, first, I'll explain how I got it, how I came across it. Um, a local gentleman here picked it up from another local um, and when he picked it up he talked on it for a little while and he decided that he wanted to put some new tubes in it I think it was doing 550 watts something like that so this one's got fresh tubes in it and this gentleman that bought it after talking on it for a while would just quit working on him quit putting out power um, and he ended up taking it to Manchester and trading it in and I bought it at Manchester with the uh, the tubes that were in it, which are right here. Uh, there's five of them there. And then um, the new tubes that are they're in it now. So the old tubes right there, which were showing 500 something watts output, new tubes here. And I uh, ended up after I getting it, after I, excuse me, after I got it, I tested all the tubes in it and the driver tube was bad driver tube was bad so it was showing extremely high input reflect and zero output and it was uh, all because of the driver tube so um, a little bit about this thing it's a one drive and four you can see the four tubes right here obviously we're not going to stick our hands in there because we got high voltage but and the one driver tube right there um, this one has been converted to run 22 km6s 22 ju6s whatever you want to run in it of the the 22 configuration basically a 22 volt uh, 6LQ6 they're extremely cheap um, that's the good thing about this amp the tubes are extremely cheap and when I tell you they're extremely cheap I mean five dollars ten dollars eight dollars they're cheap as all get out um, let's stand up here and take a look in the inside uh, this is the power supply side of it here you can see the capacitors we've got three that have been put together here to to make up for one of the the big ones that was replaced I'm sure it went bad over time uh, transformers are over here one two three four transformers in it and since this thing has been converted I'm sure one of those transformers was added I'm not a uh, expert on these or a uh, expert on tube amps regardless of what some people have thought there I'm not a genius on these by any means I uh, know just enough to get myself in trouble but uh, one of those transformers probably isn't factory it's probably been added to uh, to make it to where you can run these 22 volt tubes in here um, you've got a fan down here in the bottom you can see it spinning forces good air up here um, and the amps in pretty good shape uh, physically it's not bad I probably need to clean it. I think uh, last couple guys that had it did smoke, so I need to hit it with some 409. There's the cover to it. I think it's missing two screws out of the cover. There's our, our cover screws, so, you know, no big deal on that. But this cover's kind of uh, ingenuitive, I guess you'd say. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, it's got lips that go under the, under the amplifier, which keeps it raised up off the table, so you've got some clearance for that fan. To pull some air in so that was kind of a cool design um, it's got two variables on the inside here tuners there's one right there you can see that can that tunes the uh, dr the tube the driver tube and the other one is back let's see if we can find it here right there so you've got two uh, tunes and I've, I've kind of preset those those are good to go you should never really have to fool with those even if you switch driver tubes, um, should be pretty good to go. 
Okay, so that's a general overview of the amp. Now let's get down to the the ugly of it here. Um, it's got some issues, okay? Uh, I'm up front with folks, and I could probably do this video and work my way around it and act like this was just a fine amp and, and sell it and be on our way. But it does have some issues, and we're going to get into that. Okay, so when I got it, even after putting a new tube in it, I had the cover off, and my output was being weird. I messed around with these uh, tuners for the driver tube, and it was either zero watts or full power. Um, so, that being said, something in this area down here needs some work. Uh, whether it's components replaced, whether that tuner, that tune right there needs replaced, um, something down here has some issues to it, which could possibly be why the driver tube shorted out before and was no good. Out of all the tubes, the rest of the tubes are fine. Brand new tubes in it, driver tube shorts out. So, right now, this amp is producing power. Okay, once I put the cover back on, that could change. If any of this shifts around, if I bump into something, I don't know. But something in here, while I was poking and prodding around, uh, it needs a little bit of work. Okay, that's that's not a big issue. That's that's an easy fix. <clears throat> um, next issue. On low, this thing has a tendency to try to squeal, uh, specifically if you're running any kind of carrier into it. Um, and on high, at certain carrier levels, it's doing the same thing. Now, we're going to test it uh, both ways so I can show you guys exactly what it's doing. I want somebody who ends up with this to know exactly what they're getting, okay? Uh, I don't want there to be any secrets or any surprises um, when you get it. So, let's turn it down on low here. And we're going to key up our uh, Galaxy 44 into it. Now, our, our verbal power is all the way down, which means we're not keying a whole heck of a lot into this thing. But uh, let's give it a whirl and see what happens. A uh, thousand watt slug, peak kit's on. Hello, audio, 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 bottom scale, audio, one, two, audio, one, two, audio, one, two. A little bit over 300 watts. Audio, 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 and it's climbing too. Audio, 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 audio. But you can hear it in the background, it's trying to get a squeal in there. Now that's not a squeal because I've listened through the radio. It's not like a feedback squeal, like a talkback squeal. It's an actual, uh, I don't know if it's a ground loop trying to form in this amp um, or what's going on, but it tries to squeal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to high and we'll see what it does. Again, carrier controls all the way down. That's about 40 watts. Audio test. One, two. Audio, 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 one, two. 600 watts. So let's turn our uh, carrier control up. Key in over 100. Audio. And that squeals back. Ah, ah, audio, one, two, audio, one, two, audio, one, two. So you can probably hear that squeal in the background, but we're getting 600 watts output. And uh, I was monkeying with this thing earlier, and I think I had it up close to 700. But uh, anyway, it's done about 600. I think if I audio into it, certain tone of voice, it'll climb, get close to 700 watts. But uh, hello, one, two, audio, one, two, audio. You can hear that squeal in there pretty good. But check it out. Variable power all the way down. Audio, one, two. 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 You can barely hear it trying to, but it gets a lot better with uh, less carrier going into it. Uh, let's see. What else can we show on this thing? Let's do average power. And I'm going to show you something else on this amp. And you may have seen this in other tube amps and not really understood what it was doing. But it's something along the lines of, uh, it's caused from when they convert these amps to different voltages. It's how they're converting it. And I don't know exactly what causes it, but I've seen this before in uh, Mako amps as well. 
So we're on average power now, just so we can see this. And I'm gonna go ahead and key up. Let's see, bottom scale, oh yo. Now watch that meter fall all the way back. Oh yo. Oh yo. It falls below what I'm keying from the get go. Audio. Audio. <laughs> it's waving, kind of. Hello. Forward swing. And then backwards. Audio. Audio. And you'll see that on your signal meter if you're talking to somebody that's running something like this. I can usually see it with like Mako 300s that people converted. It'll go forward on the signal meter and then it'll try to pull back as they're talking or in between words. And it'll it'll fall below what their uh, initial carrier is. And that's what you're seeing on the uh, watt meter there. So we're getting a forward swing as we're talking. We pause words or say something different, you know, in a different tone of voice. And it falls below what it was initially... Uh, king anyway so again that's something to do with the conversion on this thing I'm pretty sure because I see it in amps that have been converted to, to different tubes um, these Makos uh, sometimes do it and uh, a few others but uh, anyway guys I think I've been pretty thorough with this video um, I'm not an expert on these Nitro 300s by any means uh, I can tell you that they're fairly valuable, um, and but I can also say, you know, this one needs some work. So, you know, take that for what it is. I would prefer someone to pick this up in person from me, and I would make you a good deal on it. Um, shipping's going to tack on another $50, $60, you know, could be up to $70 or so. I don't know. It's heavy. Um, it's a heavy little lamp. It, it, don't let the size of it fool you. This thing is heavy. Um, but I, you know, it's for sale. Uh, if you guys, if you want to pick it up from me here in southeastern Tennessee, I'll be glad to glad to meet you somewhere and, and give you a di good deal on it. Um, but yeah, that's it. Nitro 300. Uh, one of these completely refurbished and gone through on eBay brawl 800 something dollars plus shipping and the guy that did it did a bang up job on it thing was super nice this thing isn't worth that much okay in all honesty this thing's probably worth about 25% 30% of what that one brought so uh, you do the math and, and that's probably about what I'm gonna be asking for it um, if I put it on eBay and let it go to bid I'm sure it's gonna bring more seems like stuff is going crazy on there right now but uh I just soon sell it outside of eBay if somebody wants to buy it straight out. But uh, anyway, there it is, guys. Nitro 300. I hope this video has been thorough, honest, um, open, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it is what it is. I'm not going to put any time into this thing, any money into it. I'm just going to sell it as it sits. Uh, the five tubes that are over there will go with it. The five tubes that are in it will go with it. And I've got one more uh, brand new 6KM6. It doesn't have a box with it, but it's brand new. Um, or 6KM6. 22KM6, I should say. 22KM6, 22JU6. And I think there's like a 22JE6 even. All those will work in this amp. Um, so anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video. It's, I think, 14 minutes long. Uh, sorry I rambled on here, but I just want to be real thorough about it. And, uh... Hope you guys enjoy. Questions, comments, complaints, shoot me a text, 423-299-3535. Uh, we'll get back to you. And uh, going to be a lot more videos coming up. Uh, if you watch this this morning, I've got a couple beam antenna videos coming up today. And uh, I don't know. we got some other stuff we're going to be putting on here. So I uh, hope, hope you guys enjoy. And i uh, catch you on the band. Rooster in Tennessee. See you. Bye.